Taoiseach Collect, do you think you might be able to say a few words to us? Gervmagat, Ken Corla, Gervmagwiv, Azokvur, Quidvoti, Bwikis, the Peter August Heather, Don Fuko Kinolcha. Uh, and I do accept this nomination to serve as Taoiseach, and I commit to doing everything that I can to honour the trust that you have placed in me today. Uh, I want to begin uh, by thanking my own party, Fine Gael, uh, and also our partners in government, uh, Fianna Fáil and the Green Party, uh, for their votes, uh, and also for the independent TDs who supported my nomination here today. This is very much a partnership government, and I intend to lead it in the spirit of unity, a collaboration uh, and mutual respect. Today I want to pay tribute to our outgoing Taoiseach, to my colleague, uh, to my friend, Deputy Leo Varadkar. The history books will absolutely record the incredible service that he did for our country in dealing with some of the biggest challenges of our time, most notably Brexit and the COVID-19 pandemic. But history will also record that he was a trailblazer as we broke free from some of the worst prejudices of our past and showing Ireland at its best to the world. Gurmagath Leo. I also want to pay tribute to my friend and colleague Simon Coveney, who's stepping down as a minister after serving our country with distinction uh, in so many different roles over so many different years. In particular, I think any objective analysis will never forget, never forget, all that he did for our country during the darkest days of Brexit. And today we acknowledge that. We thank you for your contribution to Ireland. And I know it's a contribution you will continue. Today uh, is indeed a, a very special day for me. When I started campaigning on issues close to my heart and got involved in politics, I chose this life. Uh, but my family did not. They've been very patient today. Uh, but through every step of the journey, they have supported me uh, without question. I want to particularly thank my parents, Mary and Bart, who are here today. They have been my driving force, often making many personal sacrifices for their three children. I hope they can be proud today of their eldest son, because I absolutely know I would not be standing here were it not for them. I want to thank my sister Gemma and my brother Adam. They are my best friends, and we are each other's biggest supporters. And I also want to thank my Nana, who is here with us today. My biggest thank you. Thank you. My biggest thank you goes to my wife, Kiva, who is my rock and an incredible mother to our two beautiful children. And lastly, to my children, Saoirse and Killian, who mean the absolute world to me. I promise, <laughs> I promise being your dad will remain my most important job. It is. It is 13 years since I made my maiden speech in this chamber to nominate Enda Kenny as Taoiseach, someone who went on to fulfil the considerable faith that so many of us had in him, as he led a government that helped to rescue our economy and restored our economic sovereignty. Back then I reflected on what values I thought were needed for the job in hand. Integrity, honesty and a work rate which cannot be surpassed. As Taoiseach, I will demand of myself what I saw as so important then. And to return to the words I spoke that day, I promise to preside over a government committed to public service at a time when such commitment is so urgently required. I believed then that a Taoiseach should work every day to realise the hopes, dreams and aspirations of all our people. And I still do. So today, Ken Corla, I accept this new role in a spirit of humility, ready for the challenge and full of energy and determination about what can be achieved. As Taoiseach, I want to bring new ideas, a new energy, and I hope a new empathy to public life. But politics is never about the office holder. This is not about me. It is about all of us, all of us, working together to serve the people. We as a people, we as a country, have over the last 100 years worked tirelessly together to create our own future. Collectively, this country can and should be proud of the progress that it has made. The number of people with a job is higher than ever before. The number of people accessing education is amongst the highest in the European Union. But now is an opportune moment to build a new social contract, one which renews our promise as a republic, 
to create equality of opportunity, to support those who need the state the most, to protect our hard-earned economic success, to use its benefits to deliver tangible outcomes to society. Time is certainly short, and there's lots to do. Housing remains the greatest societal and economic challenge of our generation. Today, I recommit to moving mountains to help build more homes and drive more home ownership. I will work tirelessly to support the delivery of Slauncher Care, and will prioritise the delivery of mental health services, and in a step change in how we care for our older people. And I mean this seriously. I want to work with colleagues across this House to deliver real and meaningful reform for people with disabilities. As Taoiseach, I want to see everyone reach their full potential. I want to help create an Ireland that drives innovation and creativity, an Ireland that is compassionate, tolerant and respectful, a country that gives every child an equal start in life, an Ireland that protects our children's future by acting decisively on the climate crisis, an Ireland that values community and rural and regional development. This is a time of great challenge. It's a time in the world where leadership matters. In Ukraine, we see brave and courageous people standing firm against unprovoked war and aggression. In Gaza, we are witnessing a humanitarian catastrophe and we are seeing innocent children, women and men being starved and slaughtered. We have not been silent on the unforgivable terrorist actions of Hamas on October the 7th, nor can we be silent on the disproportionate reaction of the Israeli government. And as a country, we will play our part in helping bring about ceasefire and a lasting peace. Later this week, I will travel to Brussels and deliver those messages to Europe on behalf of the Irish people. Ireland's position in Europe is vital to our economic and social success. It has in many ways now become a part of our national identity. Yesterday, I was honoured to join with government colleagues in meeting with the First and Deputy First Ministers of Northern Ireland at the North South Ministerial Council. And I, as Taoiseach, I pledge to guard and honour my role as protector and guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement. We have so much more to achieve for all communities on this island, and I look forward to working very much with the Northern Ireland Executive, because Ireland must never take peace or freedom for granted. Our political history has been defined by our quest for freedom. Freedom of country, freedom of conscience, the freedom to achieve freedom. Today, in the 21st century, our destiny is to build on these achievements, to provide hope, to provide opportunity, to provide a better future for all. This must be our mission, our pledge to the generations to come. Whilst I am proudly the leader of Fine Gael, I will lead a coalition of three parties. And today, I sincerely promise to be a Taoiseach for all. No matter your political persuasion, I will work with you and for you and for the country that I know we all love. I will be a Taoiseach who will listen. And my message is simple. I want to work every day to improve the lives of all in this country. Fueled by hope and driven by a vision of a better Ireland, I will provide a new leadership and a new energy, and I intend to act decisively in the best interests of our people. Going back centuries, our shared history is more than simply a narrative of oppression and resistance and the courageous triumph over adversity. It is a story about belief in each other, of faith in the future. The Irish story is a story of hope. A spirit of optimism sustained us in the darkest of days. And today, once again, we must ensure it lights our way forward. Let us not make the mistake of giving in to pessimism and despair about our future. History has been written in Dáil Éireann so many times since January 1919. We can and must write it again by rising above partisan politics, by working together to solve the greatest challenges of our time. The people expect us to do more. We should demand of ourselves no less. Gurmina Magov.